Foxborough. McCarron's a running start at the three. Gets outside. 30. 35. And forward to about the 37 or 38 yard line where he's brought down after a 36 yard return. There is Steve McNair, the NFL's top rated passer during the eight seasons. From the Tennessee 38 yard line. Linebackers up and movement up front. Our referee tonight is Bill Carollo. Well, Steve McNair up at the line of scrimmage watching the defense. He just made the offensive line sit down too long. Ball starts. Left tackle number 72. Five yard penalty. First down. Brad Hopkins is the veteran of the group in his 11th season out of Illinois. Greg, you look at this Tennessee Titans offense. We talked to Jeff Fisher last night, and he said, I said, what about your game plan on offense? And he looked at us, and he goes, we've nailed it. we got it. He's so confident in what they're going to come out and do tonight. He thinks he can find some situations and make some big plays against this New England defense. McNair on first and 15 will throw. Far side. The fingertips and incomplete intended for Derek Mason for meeting this season. Romeo Cornell is the defensive coordinator for New England. An outstanding defense, particularly against the run. Eddie George and Robert Holcomb in the backfield on second and 15. Here's George. To the 34, maybe the 35. You know, I talked about this ten Tennessee offense, what they want to do, and there's a good case in point on that play. Jeff Fisher, we want to be patient. Don't get carried away. If we get tough situations, let's punt the football. And right now, this is one of those tough situations. Third and long, Big Ted Washington. That's when he comes out of the game. You get faster guys in there to rush the quarterback. Tennessee needs the 48 yard line for a first down. McNair has five wide receivers and he'll work from the shotgun. Down the field has his man open and overthrew him. Intended for Drew Bennett who had Tyrone Poole beaten. And look at the New England defensive players. They know they made a mistake. Penalty marker back up field and it's going to be against Tennessee. Here's the call. Illegal use of the hands, hands to the face, 72 offense. That penalty is declined, fourth down. Again, Brad Hopkins, the guilty party, and here is Craig Hentrick, Pro Bowl punter. And Troy Brown is deep for New England. Craig Hendrick kicks a knuckleball, Jeff Fisher said, and he says if it's windy, it's going to be very difficult for the return men to get under it and catch it. This is not the knuckleball, but it's not very deep. Fair catch called for by Brown and made at the 30-yard line. And Tom October. Well, the number one key for this New England offense, they're going to throw the football. They're going to spread it out. They do not want Tom Brady to get hit early. Get rid of the football quickly. It's always a good plan against a good defensive front. Antoine Smith to the 30-yard line. Six-year cornerback Samari Roll had a team leading six interceptions during the regular season, and he added one last week in the playoff win over Baltimore. Second and 11. Smith again. To the 35, maybe just across the 35 before Kevin Carter made the stop. You know, <clears throat> excuse me, Phil, we've heard louder crowds here in New England. The weather may have something to do with that. Well, you know, when it's, it's four degrees, Greg, you sit on your hands a lot of time. 
and you just they were they were late arriving too. We were sitting here and I wondered how many fans would stay away because of the low temperatures. But as I look around, not many people did stay away. They're here. They're excited. And watching the opening of the game. Third and five. Brady throwing wide open over the middle is Kevin Falk and Falk into Tennessee territory to the 45 yard line and a first down. This New England offense does so many things but one of the best plans they usually have they spread you out and then they get Kevin Falk coming out of the backfield against a linebacker nice move to the outside he makes the fake Peter Sermon goes for it and then when he comes back inside look at it nobody there to make the tackle once he gets past the linebacker. First down, New England, and Brady to throw with time. Throwing it, it is incomplete, intended for number 87, David Gibbons. Crowd wants interference, none called. Well, what you always want to do, Lance Schulter is number 31. When you're an offensive coordinator or your offense, you want to get matches you think that favor you. You've got a wide receiver in David Gibbons going against the safety. You expect him to get separation. That time, excellent job by Lance Schultz. Second and 10, and now Antoine Smith and Larry Centers spread out as fourth and fifth receivers. Quick pass out here, and that is complete to Centers. And Centers to about the 41. Peter Sermon coming up with the stop. Well, we watched practice, Greg, on Thursday. You see so many things from this New England offense. They got two backs. They spread to five wide receivers, and it's a good adjustment by the Tennessee Titans defense. Jeff Fisher, what did he say last night to us? He goes, hey, I know they're going to do this. They're going to shift to that, and he went through everything that we saw in practice Thursday, and you just got to laugh. They, In the NFL, it's hard to fool the opposing coach because of all the studying they do. There's a lot of studying to be done too. The 41 yard line. Third and six. And Brady calls timeout. So Brady calls timeout, stops the clock with 11.05 to play in the first quarter. Scoreless in Frigid Fox. Let's go back to Greg and Phil. All right, Jim. Boy, Phil, you and I were talking about that game earlier and how those lost opportunities by the Rams earlier in the game in the red zone could come back and bite them. They've done that. Third and six for Brady and the Patriots. Brady gets all kinds of protection. Throwing down the middle. Caught. Touchdown. Bethel Johnson, the rookie out of Texas A&M. Bethel Johnson might be the fastest guy on the football field tonight. Again, you've got a wide receiver against Lance Schulters, who is a safety, who usually plays back, and it's going to be tough for him against a wide receiver of this speed. Tom Brady sees it and makes a perfect throw. Lance Schulters, number 31, and Lamont Thompson, number 37, were looking at each other even before Bethel Johnson crossed the goal line. Good. Tom Brady with the touchdown pass to Bethel Johnson and the Patriots grab the early 7-0 lead. Nothing warms the hearts of New England's fans as much as a touchdown pass from Tom Brady. 41 yards to Bethel Johnson. And once again, Patriots make it a habit of scoring on the opening drive. They lead at 7-0 and now Justin McCarron's deep. This one's going to come up short. Karen picks it up at the 17. Goes right up the middle and across the 35 to the 37. And let's go back to the touchdown. Well, let's look at what happened to this Tennessee Titans defense. Lance Schultz is here. He's going to run out and try to run with Bethel Johnson. That's Lamont Thompson who has to be in the middle of the two wide receivers at the top. The speed of Bethel Johnson. Watch it from the cable cam. Really good view. 
Lamont Thompson in the middle can't come over and help out Lance Schulters. Tom Brady celebrating. Phil, you picked up on it on Thursday. The wind, the temperature wasn't as low, but the wind was blowing 30 tremendously on 30. So it had to be at least as cold as this, maybe even colder, and Tom Brady had no problems throwing the ball at all. You, you know, I'm, I'm cautious when I tell people that. We talked about it in the pregame, Greg, to the studio show, and the guys, he was terrific in just terrible conditions. And he's good at it because Bill Belichick always keeps him outside to practice. McNair going to throw. And he's got his man. 85 is Derek Mason. And Mason across midfield to the 46 of the New England Patriots. Yeah, there's a couple things. When you watch it, Jeff Fisher said, look, we're going to get behind probably. They're going to make a big play score. We just got to come back and answer and settle the game down again. And look, it's, it's easy to say that as a coach when you have the big guy on your side. And that's Steve McNair. This weather, would you think this would bother Steve McNair? Going through the injuries, he's big, he's tough. He's got hands as large as any quarterback in the league. He can handle the cold elements. On first down, Eddie George coming this way. May have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. No game, and it'll be second and 10. And there is Steve McNair, co-MVP of the National Football League, along with Peyton Manning, and just outstanding. No question that he's the man who carries these Tennessee Titans. And you're talking about him playing in the cold weather. Phil, we asked him last night, you know, have you ever played in cold weather? As you look at his numbers on his career and his season, and he said, well, yeah, it was really cold in Youngstown, Ohio. He said, how did you do? He said, I threw it 80 times for over 400 <laughs> yards. Just 82 throws. Two tight ends. And McNair throw on second and ten. Coming across, that's complete to Drew Bennett. And Bennett with speed up the sideline and out of bounds just short of the 20-yard line. Well, there's a lot to worry about when you play this Tennessee Titans offense. First the quarterback, then you got Eddie George behind the center, but now they have the receiving core to complement the thrower and the runner. And Drew Bennett is just one of those receivers. They're big, they can fight for the ball, and that's all we heard from New England. Wow, these guys, they go and get the football. They catch it. And Steve McNair told us, I like my guys against anybody. Steve McNair is not shy about putting it up and letting his receivers go get it. First down at the Patriot 22. George inside the 20 to about the 17-yard line. And that's where you want to run the football against the Patriots. Why do you want to do that? Well, why would you run a, want to run inside if you're Mike Heimendinger, the offensive coordinator, when Ted Washington, the greatest run stopper in the league, is inside? So you go off tackle. That's where they want to go. They had a little success in that run, so they know the plan is solid. Can you keep executing it? There's Big, Big Ted. Ted Washington in the middle of that defensive line, second and six. McNair almost picked off and now there's a penalty marker down as Roman Pfeiffer almost picked it off but that's Richard Seymour. Oh I was watching down the field so I did not see Richard Seymour either get the late hit or he might have just fallen on top of the quarterback which is also a personal foul. Personal foul, roughing the passer, 93, defense driving the quarterback into the ground, automatic first down. So it's not a late hit, it's once you hit him, oh yes, and he fell right on top of him. You cannot take the quarterback down and drive your body weight into him. And I know it sounds silly, it's a contact sport, but you got to help the quarterbacks out and protect them. The rookie Chris Brown, number 29 in the backfield on first and goal. He gets the handoff. Inside the five to about the four. Teddy Bruschi making the stop. This is a New England defense that has been very, very stubborn all season long. That's an understatement. With all the words you know, you could come up something better than stubborn. <laughs> it's un 
unbelievable whatever the the Titans almost scored half the points in one game that the Patriots gave up in eight second and goal Brown the other way cuts it back to the end zone touchdown off the tackle that is one impressive drive by the Tennessee Titans now, Four yards. I'm sorry, Greg, but now I understand when we met them last night, they weren't cocky, but they were close to it. Look off the right tackle. Good job at drive blocking. Zach Pillar, Justin Hardwig. And Chris Brown, just like last week, gets near the goal line. They bring him in. He's got the speed and good vision to get in there for the touchdown. Chris Brown with no touchdowns during the regular season had now scored two in two postseason games and Jeff Fisher very high on him last night said simply we found our future in the running in the running back. He's been resting. He's waiting for the big moment. It's a big game play. Anderson's kick is good. 731 to play in the first quarter. And Jeff Fisher has seen what he wanted to see. He wanted to see how his team would answer a score. They come right back and retire. A little bit of the quieting of the crowd. What an impressive drive by the Tennessee Titans. Six plays, 61 yards, assisted greatly by the penalty on Richard Seymour. Well, that penalty and the good run blocking, I think that was the big surprise to me of that scoring drive. Number 81, Bethel Johnson is the deep man in the return. This is very short. On the far side of the field from the 23 is Kevin Falk. And Falk across the 35 and piled out of bounds. Bill Belichick looking on. Yeah, they're not used to seeing this crowd. You know, they're a little stunned, Greg, because they haven't seen a team march down the field really and score a touchdown like that in quite a quite a while. Well, they also haven't seen the water come up out of the water fountain and stay there in midair <laughs> either. Antoine Smith and Larry Centers in the backfield with Brady. Play fake. Brady with time. Throws this side incomplete. Intended for centers out of the backfield. Peter Sermon on the coverage. Well, let's go back and look at this touchdown. Was Chris Brown's knee down before he got across the goal line? It's really close. It hits. Looks like it could be just inside the one yard line, but really it's tough play for Bill Belichick to challenge. But again, Benji Olsen, Fred Miller, and Justin Hardwig really moved that defensive line backwards for that touchdown run. Brady to throw on second and ten. Quick slant. That's complete. Diedrich Ward. Ward inside the 45 to the 42 yard line of the Tennessee Titans, and that's a first down. Well, we talk so much about the conditions. It's so cold and how will the players deal with it? Well, you, both teams dealing with it exceptionally well. Tom Brady right on target. Diedrich Ward catches it with his hands. And something they don't get a lot of sometimes, yards after the catch. Tom Brady, we asked him the other day if he will wear a glove. He said, absolutely not. Doesn't like the sticky feel. Throws this side, and that's completely given. And given out of bounds at about the 33 or 34 yard line and you know Greg he doesn't want to wear that club he has such confidence he's learned to control the football as well as anybody I watch he's got a strong arm and again we can't state this enough these guys practice and they played many games this year in really tough elements and he's always handled it extremely well he said, will you wear a glove? No, I won't wear the glove on the throwing hand. Will you wear the pouch? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Get so. that hand in there quick. This is Antoine Smith. And Smith short of a first down. And it'll be third and short. Well, Tom Brady has been terrific at home this year. He's just been almost perfect. They've won all their home games this year. Seven touchdowns, no interceptions. And again, a lot of those games have been in high wind, rain, snow, and on a really bad field. The field, hey, great, let's talk about it. It looks terrific from what it was before. On short yardage, it's Larry Center straight ahead, and he is very close to a first down. 
Yeah, he didn't get a great spot. And we're going to get a measurement. Yeah, the, we have seen we have seen the field here at Gillette Stadium much more torn up than it is now. It looks, oh, yeah. It's beautiful by comparison. What did Tom Brady say at the end of the season? Yeah, let those teams come up here and play us on our crappy field. So this play, it's it's not close. It's going to be fourth down. The offense still on the field. Although Tom Brady takes a walk up and takes a close look, we are going to get a measurement. Oh, there we go. Okay. You know, we can't do any on cameras tonight. You know that, too. So, because your nose is running, you're a mess. You got Army boots on. You know, Mr. Whatever, you're all beat up with this cold weather. Annie M., I know we're nowhere near the equator. <laughs> Fourth and one, and Bill Belichick says go for it. Absolutely. You don't want to punt it too far for a field goal, and it's inside one yard. Here come the Patriot fans. Out of the eye formation, Antoine Smith, the deep back. He's going to throw it. Brady throws it out here to the side. It is complete. Christian Fourier made the catch for a fight. First down, New England. Well, you talk about just making plays, and that's all this is. So the Tennessee Titans are not even fooled at all. Tank Williams is all over Christian Fourier, and Tom Brady knows time is running out. He just throws it, hoping to get fortunate, and Christian Fourier just goes and gets the football. Inside the Tennessee 25. New England looking for four passing yards already. Smith, left side, trying to turn the corner, breaks it to about the 21-yard line. You know, you hear so much. I listen to the pregame shows all the time, and they talk about New England. They're a one-dimensional team, and you're right. They're not very pretty when they run the football. They don't gain a lot of yards, but they still keep running it. They get their attempts in there. They run the ball about almost 30 times a game. They're going to keep their rhythm and try to keep you honest so the most important part of their offense passing sometimes can catch you by surprise left guard Damian Woody has left the game with a leg injury the quick pass to the outside Kevin Falk couldn't hold on in so many elements Keith Bullock the linebacker for the Tennessee Titans we're talking to him and he says I got their offense down I got it I've got it figured out when they do this he's going through all of it and then he kind of looks and he laughs. He goes, yeah, but whatever you study against these guys, it's always the opposite when you play the game. So it, they, just, they just do everything. You just don't know what they're going to feature when you play them. Tonight, a lot of it's going to be spread to field, and they're going to let the defense dictate whether they run or throw it. Bullock, the Titans, leading tackler. Third and seven. A little movement up front, and this one is going to go against the Patriots. Right tackle Tom Ashworth appeared to jump. Prior to the snap, false start, 68 offense, five yard penalty, still third down. I'll tell you what, by the third, third quarter, Bill Carollo, he's going to sound like he's drunk because <laughs> he's already getting a little frozen. The prior to the snap. Oh, so it's it's you can tell it's cold when you just listen to the listen to him talk out there. So now it's a third and 12. They're going to play zone. The big plays have already backed off the Tennessee Titans defense. Brady rolling this way. All kinds of time and now throws for the end zone. It is incomplete. Pass is intended for Dion Branch. And Scott McGarahan was covering. Oh, and Scott McGarahan might have got away with one that time. He might have pulled down the arm of the receiver, but this was a play that the Patriots were hoping to score a touchdown on. Scramble Tom Brady to the right and throw it to the back of the end zone, but Tennessee was waiting on it. Now, here's Adam Vinatieri, and one of the questions about playing in cold weather is how that football is when you're kicking what amounts to a rock. That's a, I'm sure that's what it feels like. 44-yard attempt. Kick is on the way, and it's no good. Hook to the left. 
Jeff Fisher's defense holds. 3.59 to plus Armin Katayan, Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. Tennessee 7 and New England 7, and the Titans take over at their own 34 yard line. Eddie George and Robert Holcomb in the backfield. And McNair going to put it up, going to go deep down the sideline. It is intercepted. Rodney Harrison. And Harrison is down at his own 43 yard line. McNair threw three interceptions last week against the Baltimore Ravens and throws one here tonight. Shad Meyer, the intended receiver. Rodney Harrison got there first. Hey, don't just watch the action from the sidelines. Play fantasy sports with games for every level of player on CBS Sportsline. Step up to the plate and join a league or start your own today. Click on fantasy at cbssportsline.com. Off the Rodney Harrison interception, Brady gives to Smith. And Antoine Smith can find no running room whatsoever. Javon Curse led the charge, and let's go back to the interception. Well, let's go back. It's, Rod it's Rodney Harrison against Shad Meyer on the outside. Bill Belichick said, this is the best group of cover people I've ever had in my career in the secondary. And Rodney Harrison has been terrific all year. I think... You know, I'm not going to say he is definitely one of the best pickups in the free agent market that any team made around the whole league. A, a great tackler, and he can cover tight ends and wide receivers down the field. Brady to throw on second and 13. Has time. Now pulls it down. Got rid of it, and it is incomplete and almost intercepted by Bullock. Well, if you make... Tom Brady hold on to the football long. He is going to get pressure from the front four, but Keith Bullock dropping back in zone. Watch, read the quarterback, come up. He throws, react to it, just can't quite come up with the catch. Tennessee, though, I said it earlier, you give up a few big plays, that'll back you off and make you a little scared, and you better be careful. Brady over his last three throwing the ball sends Falk in motion. And they backed up again. Quick pass over the middle. That's complete. Bethel Johnson looking for running room. Goes the other way. Brady throws a block. Turning the corner. First down. What a run by Bethel Johnson. Tom Brady throws the block on Lance Schulters. That's what lets Bethel Johnson get around to the outside. Tennessee's dropping back. They make you throw it short. When you throw it short, you got to make the tackle. They over pursue. Tom Brady comes back. That was the block that did it. And, and again, Bethel Johnson, his speed, making it work for him. From the Tennessee 46, Brady throwing. His Fourier, Fourier forced out of bounds inside the 30-yard line to about the 27. Well, I watch this offense, Greg. We've done enough Patriot games. I talk about it all the time. I've said it tonight. They do a lot of stuff. What did Tom Brady say to us the other day? We had some laughs about it. He goes, this offense is Tom Brady friendly. This offense is Tom Brady friendly. That's what he talks about. It just does a little bit of everything. A lot of short throws, makes it easy on him physically, and then when he has to read the defense, he's been taught well, and he does it very well. Now on first down, Brady throwing, incomplete. That's intended for David Gibbons. It'll be second and 10. We are having some intermittent transmission problems, and we apologize for that. You think that's because of the cold weather? How would you know? <laughs> My thoughts exactly. Oh, that's how would you know? That's right. Boy, I tell you, it, it, it just never be surprised. So many people ask me around here the last couple of days, what about the weather, this, that? I said, these guys are pros. They have learned to execute and play in extreme conditions, and everybody's handling it well so far. Brady still with the football throws off. 
inside the 15 yard line to the 14. Fourier with the catch and it's a first down and we've got a penalty marker down. Carlos Hall come walk, comes walking off the field pointing to the Patriots. This isn't wearing a striped shirt. Yeah, he's pretty confident, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, I was rushing the passer. They held me. I'd have sacked him. <laughs> I was there. Holding 99 defense. That penalty is declined. Result of the play, first down. 99 is the rookie Ryan Long. What happens now more than it has in the past, they want to do this when they can. Defensive linemen grab other defensive linemen to free up one of their teammates. If you do that, the umpire will see it and he will throw the flag. This is Antoine Smith and Smith inside the 10 to about the seven. You know, we talk about this New England offense. When they run it, that was a run. It was almost like catch you by surprise. They do it with formations. And also, Tom Brady does something a lot of quarterbacks just don't do enough. He went up there, quick count. That quick count was enough to give his running back the edge, and that's why he picked up five or six yards. We are in the final 50 seconds of the first quarter, second and five. You got to keep them off balance, Greg. There's a talented people on the other side. You do anything you can to help your team. Quick pass to the side. That's complete to Branch and Branch to about uh, the six yard line. Yeah, as, as some coaches tell us, those other guys are also on scholarship. <laughs> yeah, million dollar scholarships. That's the one you're on. It appears that will be the end of the first quarter. Doesn't look like the Patriots will run another offensive play before time winds down. We'll take the trek to the other end of the field, much to the delight of the fans at the opposite end of the stadium. Brady, 152 yards and a touchdown in the first quarter. That's the end of one with our score, the Titans 7 and the Patriots 7. We're coming back to Gillette Stadium after this. You're watching the NFL on CBS. In only the fifth double overtime game in NFL history. That's what happened earlier today in the NFC side of the postseason. Carolina knocked off the St. Louis Rams in St. Louis. Another good outing for the Panthers. John Fox, Jake DeLome. Antoine Smith, Larry Centers in the backfield, third and three. Brady still has the football. Looking in the end zone. Looking, going to run for it. He dives and has a first down. That was a really good job by Tom Brady. He made the defensive players think pass to the very last second because they've got the receivers covered. There's a linebacker right in front of him, but just those little ball fakes keep them back. Peter Sermon could have reacted quicker. It looks like he got the first down easy from that angle. Sermon and Kevin Carter converged as Brady continues to walk it off we yeah. will get a measurement on the far side of the field yeah he's that that leg now he hurt his I thought he hurt his knee in the game against Buffalo two weeks ago walking a little gingerly around on it right now but when you watch Tom Brady run and I say this with a little humor because he tells us he asks us almost every single week what's he say Greg is there any quarterback in the NFL slower than me and I go Tom no there is not you, I'm not even going to argue the point and he just and he laughs he goes God I'm slow and he works on it he tries but he has tremendous awareness very good movement in the pocket and it doesn't matter that he doesn't have fast foot speed he buys extra time and there he used his little pump fakes to pick up the first down Dan Klecko the lead blocker in the backfield now a defensive lineman on first and goal this is Smith trying the left side looking for the end zone no touchdown signal yet it'll be second down I don't see how anybody could tell there was about 20 bodies in the pile 
but it's just good movement by the Patriots offensive line. Oh, Dan Kleckel gets a pretty good look in there, but the Tennessee Titans fight hard, and it's a very good spot by the officials. Antoine Smith, Keith Bullock, terrific hit. Boy, look at Dan Klecko. Dan Klecko made it to the end zone. It's Antoine Smith, the ball carrier, came up short. He's still fighting. 11th play of this drive. Smith, touchdown. by the New England Patriots. Well, let me change that. Power by Antoine Smith. Know where you're at on the field when you need a half a yard. Just run into them, run them over. Drive by the New England offense. Vinatieri for the extra point. And it's good. With a defensive lineman, Dan Klecko leading the way. Antoine Smith puts the New England Patriots back on top, 14-7. Oh, the Patriots hardy faithful. <laughs> Look at that sign. It says, Eskimo up. I like it. Vinatieri to kick. Justin McCarron deep to receive. Patriots back on top, 14-7 and 13.46 to play in the first half. This one coming up short. McCarron's on the run at the 20-yard line, up the sideline and out of bounds across the 35 at about the 37 or 38-yard line. And we'll take a moment to remind you, Sunday on 60 Minutes, when a former George W. Bush insider says at cabinet meetings the president acted like a blind man talking to the deaf, that's a story for 60 Minutes, Sunday. So once again, Jeff Fisher will have a chance to see how his team answers as they've fallen behind by a touchdown. I think he'd like to see one time how's the other team going to answer, but so far they've been behind. Look at the number of total plays so far in the game. New England, a team that comes out and they are aggressive on both sides of the ball. A lot of looks on offense and a lot of looks on defense. McNair to throw on first down. And that one's complete to the 43-yard line. The pass is completed to his tight end friend, Frank Wycheck, who, uh, from all indications, is in the final days of his fine career. This is the 11th season out of the University of Maryland. Wycheck was acquired from the Redskins on waivers, and Jeff Fisher told us, without a doubt, he has been an integral part oh. of this franchise's success. When they made their Super Bowl run the last time, Greg, Frank Wycheck was the passing game for the Tennessee Titans offense. Second and four. Here's Eddie George. And George twists his way across the 45 to the 46, and Teddy Bruschi is there to meet him along with Richard Seymour. A pickup of two, and it'll be third and two. You know, we were talking about Steve McNair earlier in the game, and, you know, Greg, one thing that comes to my mind, you remember years ago when they were making their Super Bowl run, he was throwing about 15 to 20 passes a game, and nobody thought he could survive or was a good quarterback because of that. So he, le he learned to win that way, and he has shown he can win by throwing the football a lot. Eddie George off the field. Chris Brown has replaced him, and he's flanked out to the side as a receiver. Big blitz. The pass is complete. Derek Mason inside the Patriot 45 to the 44 and a Tennessee first down. Here is the key for the Tennessee Titans against the looks of the New England Patriots defense. They're going to blitz. They are going to get guys free, but it's going to be to the outside, and it's Steve McNair can catch it and get rid of the football before Mike Vrabel can get there. Jeff Fisher said 
protect him inside. If we make him come outside, the free guy, Steve McNair, will find an open receiver or make the outside blitzer missing. On first down from the 44-yard line, McNair to throw it again. All kinds of time went over the middle to Eddie George, and he is hit immediately after catching the ball by Teddy Bruschi. Boy, we were talking just amongst ourselves about Eddie George. Talk about a courageous performance a week ago against the Baltimore Ravens, suffered a separated shoulder, came back, and was the heart and soul of the Titans' victory in the second half. You know, to say he's tough, that's, that's like being silly. It's much more than that. And Eddie George, he talked about tonight's game, and he says, man, I'm going to have to do it the hard way running. That's one and two yards at a time. Get contact, fall forward, try to help the offense stay in good situations. But he really is just got a tremendous heart and tremendous courage. George again to the left side. And he is at about the 37 and a half yard line. And when you talk about Eddie George, when you watch him run, every time he's hit, even though he stands up tall when he runs, he almost always falls forward. And look what he has done since 1996. Just been one of the most productive running backs in the National Football League. A very good leader and one of the vital parts to the Tennessee Titans team. I like the way he approached this game. He said, we're going to have to do it the hard way. Third and three. Chris Brown is in the lineup now. Here they come. McNair outside that's complete Mason inside the 20 out of bounds or inside the 30 rather to the 25 yard line Eugene Wilson forced him out. Yeah really just another good job they faked me out they did not blitz they were trying to cover all the inside receivers but Steve McNair is just too cool very relaxed against this defense and Derek Mason is just too good and Steve McNair again. I always ask quarterbacks this when they play the New England Patriots. What do you think? He goes, oh, I got it. It's not that bad. I, they're not going to confuse me. And so far, he has shown he is not confused. McNair from the shotgun on first down. Throws outside. Mason once again forced out of bounds at the 20. I thought Jeff Fisher was very interesting last night when he said that he has preached patience all week long and the integrity of protection. There will be no unblocked rushers on Steve McNair. Well, tonight. inside, they're going to come free, Greg, because they're going to bring more than you can, you can protect against. But the wide receivers, they're a tremendous group. They like their matchups. And, they, and so far, when they're getting those one-on-ones, they're doing a good job of getting open. Nine and a half minutes to play first half. Just inside the 20-yard line, McNair again from the shotgun. With time, all kinds of time. Oh, he missed a wide open receiver down the middle. Still on the move, still on the move, and now he's going to run it out of bounds. I know they ran this play against this defense for one reason, for Derek Mason to get down the middle to throw against the two deep safeties. When you see safety separate, you want to go down the middle. Steve McNair's looking, but he comes off of it too quick. Look at Derek Mason in the end zone. Nobody from New England ever picked him up. And there's a loss of seven on the play, which creates a third and 11. The Tennessee Titans don't allow many sacks. This is the first in the last 102 Gosh. pass plays. That is, that is awesome. Third and 11. Gonna run out of time. Penalty marker is down. That will be delay of game. Well, they got to be careful that they don't lose too many yards here and lose a chance at kicking a field goal. You know, too, Greg, as we wait for this call, I just think it's interesting the way both coaches kind of prepare their teams for the game. Bill Belichick prepares his team, no rah rah speeches. He says, if I get them prepared, they'll come out. They'll play hard and be really aggressive because they know what's going on. So that's the way he does it. He says, no, no speeches. Now, on the other side, you got Jeff Fisher. We're waiting for the call. But on the other side, you got Jeff Fisher 
who does the opposite. He's looking for little edgy things to get his team emotional. Wait for the call. Delay a game, offense, five yard penalty, third down. But we were talking to him last night, so we laughed because he just, he's a, it's not that he's making it up, but he's looking for angles. Nobody gives us a chance. They talk about the weather. Hey, they're preparing for the Super Bowl. I can't wait to tell my team all this. And I just go, wow, he just, if there's nothing there, he'll he'll find a way to get it going. Jeff Fisher is the epitome of the us against them approach. Oh, he loves it. Third and 16. Fakes the throw the other way, and now the quick pass to Wycheck, and Wycheck is dragged down at the 28-yard line. That will bring the field goal unit onto the field. Yeah, that was a good call by the Tennessee Titans. Willie McGinnis does a really nice job of rushing the passer, stopping, and then falling back and making the tackle. When you talk about screen plays, defensive linemen and pass rushers have to be good at making the tackle from behind. You know, I made the assumption that it was the field goal unit, but I don't see Gary Anderson out there. No, could be a long field goal. With Craig Hendrick. He was good from about 50 in this direction in pregame warmups. And play clock winds down to double zeros here. And another delay of game penalty against the Titans. Well, you were right. It's going to. It's like they're going to punt it. And you mentioned it before, Craig Hentrick. Delay, offense, five-yard penalty, fourth down. Craig Hentrick, and Jeff Fisher was just raving about it last night, kicks a knuckleball. And particularly in this kind of weather, it could be extremely difficult to handle. Yeah, I have not had a chance to see it in person, so I go, well, if this is really good, then... Other punters around the NFL got to try to learn how to do this. And he picks his spots for when he wants to use it. Troy Brown is deep. Hendrick straight up. There it is. And not much spin on it. But it takes a New England bounce. And you saw New England wanted no part of it. Let it bounce. 14 yard punt. Knuckleball or no knuckleball. That doesn't help the field position. Seven to play here in the first half. New England with a one touchdown lead and the football at their own 19 yard line. I went to get a drink in my water and it's frozen. Imagine that. I can't throw it on you now then. Shoot. I'll just have to hit you with it. So Brady goes to work from his own 19. Play straight ahead. Or Antoine Smith across the 30 to the 32 yard line. All during the timeout, we were just marveling at that kick of Craig Hendrick. Take a look at it. As it's coming down, it is drifting. It's <laughs> it's doing everything but coming down straight. And Troy Brown did the appropriate thing. Get out of the way. Because you never know where it's going to bounce once it hits the ground. You consider the way that ball is going and any wind that would take hold of it and the cold weather. Antoine Smith right side across the 35 to about the 37 yard line where Peter Sermon makes the stop. Well good job by the Patriots up front just showing some power and Antoine Smith he is a no nonsense runner of the football. Get it. Maybe look for an opening, uh, an open hole. If it's not there, run in somebody and get some yards because that's how they play offense here in New England. Gain a couple. Give me the run pass option on second down. Brady throw on second and five this side and then came up short to Deion Branch. It'll be third and five. Tell you how else they play offense here and, and Brady is kind of nonchalantly said it but you can tell that it's a philosophy that comes down from Bill Belichick all the way through they want to put pressure on every single play yeah continue to apply pressure with everything that you do on the field that's how they play football Greg you're right and Tom Brady says we've won so many games this year because the other team just gives up we persevere because we just keep doing stuff and we keep coming after you from both sides and the other team just gets tired of it. They give up sometimes. They don't know it. And a big play happens. Brady with time. 
got rid of it. Almost interception and almost caught. Lamont Thompson got his fingers on the football. I tell you, incomplete. I tell you what, Tom Brady, when he let it go from his hand, I know what he was thinking. It's perfect. But Lamont Thompson, number 37, he's big and he's rangy, and he's got about a two feet more of a reach than you expect. And he has it in his hands. Oh, he just gets a fingertip on it, not able to bring it in. Troy Brown, no catches today so far. Low snap. Ken Walker gets it away. This one is going to bounce. Well, I would call it a bounce. <laughs> kind of a thud at about the 35-yard line and rolls to a stop. So we're 523 away from the first half break after a 27-yard punt. We'll be back. Halftime report. To about the 37, close to the 38-yard line. Let's go down to Armin. Thanks, Greg. You know, you guys are talking about Eddie George. He's really one of those rare athletes who let his actions speak louder than words. The linebacker Keith Bullock tell us, telling us last night in that wild card game against the Ravens when Eddie showed up and played with that dislocated shoulder, he said he put it on the line without saying it. He said, this is what it's all about in the playoffs. Nothing given to you. You have to take it. He's making a similar statement tonight. That shoulder's in a harness. He's taking a shot. He's got a sore ankle, but he's back in that starting lineup where he's always been, Greg. Back to you. Armin, he even said it. That he and the rest of his teammates have the mindset of warriors going to the playoffs every year. Down the field. That pass is complete. Derek Mason. And a fine throw by Steve McNair right on the money. This play really exemplifies Steve McNair a lot, too. He just looked down the field. Nobody was open. Looked to the right. Looked to the center. And then he finds Derek Mason opened on the left side in between two defenders. And years ago, Steve McNair would have ran the football and got three yards. And we all would have, wow, that's the element he brings. He gets three yards. Now he's learned to stand in the pocket, and he gets 25 and 30 yards. Little stutter step from George, and he is close to the 30-yard line. You know, Bill Belichick, whenever we talk to him, you can't say that he goes overboard in his praise of other <laughs> players. And he's hardly that. So when he sat there on Thursday and said, now, Mason is a really good football player, you know that he has the respect of Bill Belichick. Yeah, and, and, and Greg, we watch him on film, but when you watch him in person, Derek Mason is quick and fast. And he's really creating problems for New England secondary. Mason, five catches for 72 yards tonight. A second and seven for Tennessee. George to the 28. You know, I watch Eddie George run the football. And, it, and we were talking last night. I just said, you know what Eddie George is? He is a playoff running back. And what, what I mean by that is, he gets two, three, and five-yard gains, the tough gains that keep you in good situations. He's not going to dodge a bunch of people and pick up 20 or 30, but he gets those hard yards. You know, almost like playoff hockey. There's playoff hockey teams that are good in the regular season. Some are good in the playoffs. Eddie George is good for the playoffs. Tennessee racking up the yardage this quarter, but looking for the end zone. Third and five. Chris Brown up the middle. Inside the 20 to the 15 and a first down. Oh, that caught everybody by surprise. New England, they spread out four wide receivers. They're covering the inside receivers to each side. Now there's nobody in the space except Teddy Bruschi who gets blocked and it allows Chris Brown to run for the first down. 13 yard pickup, the longest run by Tennessee tonight. Well, when Chris Brown comes in, pay attention to him because they give the ball to him. He's the lone back behind McNair now. First down from the 15-yard line. Brown right side. To about the 13. And with that, we're going to roll up on the two-minute warning. Two minutes to play in Foxborough. New England 14 and Tennessee 7. Cold football games? Oh, you betcha. The Raiders in Buffalo, it was zero. San Diego at Cincinnati, a minus nine. And the Ice Bowl, Dallas and Green Bay, 13 below. Here in Foxborough, 
it's three. And the wind chill is 12 below. Is that all? Come on, we were expected 20 below. I think they said that just to try to get me to climb back on the plane. Yeah, that was CBS saying that. <laughs> from, from the 13-yard line. Chris Brown in the backfield. Look at the time of possession. Tennessee has dominated this second quarter. McNair going to throw it. Running out of time. Pulled it down and escaped. On the move. Cut inside and maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Mike Vrabel came up to make the hit. Yeah, Richard Seymour has him in the backfield. And Steve McNair, this is not no ordinary quarterback. When you meet him in person, you go, my God, how big are you? And gets around him, you can't pull him down. But Mike Vrabel, a tremendous athlete in the open field, comes up and brings him down. Another tremendous free agent pickup by the New England Patriots, Mike Vrabel. McNair needs the five-yard line for a first down. Third and eight. From the shotgun, here comes the blip. The pass outside, incomplete. Justin McCarron's the intended receiver, and Mike Vrabel was in on McNair. It was a blitz by the Patriots. The Tennessee Titans did a terrific job of picking it up, but Steve McNair knows it's a blitz, so he just gets a little anxious. Chris Brown gets Rodney Harrison, and he throws the football just before the wide receiver is ready to catch it because he was open for the first down. Gary Anderson, number one all time in field goals kicked and points scored. 31 yards out. High snap, it gets down, it's blocked. is down and the ball is down at the 22 yard line let's check the flag Bill Carollo going to sort all of this out But everyone is pretty certain that things are going to stay as is. It is going to be against Tennessee. Well, I was watching the field goal, Greg. It looked like the snap was high, and the timing was just not as good as it should be. Hendrick goes up and gets it. Richard Seymour just comes Personal rumbling foul, through there. Unnecessary roughness, number 71, a blow to the face during the kick. That county has declined. Result of the play, New England's ball, first down. So Fred Miller, guilty of the personal foul. New England has the ball at their own 22-yard line with a minute to play in the first half. Steve McNair's scoring attempt on the next tell, halftime report. Brady going to go from the shotgun. Pump fake now throws over the middle. Troy Brown, his first catch of the night, and down at about the 28 yard line. Clock continues to move. And now we get a timeout. Oh, well, they don't have anybody special. No, they might not, but they have a lot of good players in this football team. And you put all those good players together, you get a 14 2 record. Brady. Oh, great job. Of time. And now throws over the middle. It's incomplete. Off the fingertips of David Gibbons. I mean, how, you talk about, we said Tom Brady said about the offense, it's Brady friendly, but here's what he does. Oh, no, nope, but I don't like it. Just shuffle, beautiful footwork. The football does get away from him just a little bit, but the plays he's able to run, the coaching he is getting, and taking his talent, that's why you see him being such a productive winning quarterback. It's everything brought into one, and just that foot movement in the pocket, Another reason why he's good. We get a little jump at the offensive line. <laughs> Peter Sermon lifting Kevin Falk off the ground. It's 
against Tennessee. That's a big penalty. Big penalty against Tennessee. Third and four. You got three timeouts. You can make a punt into the win. Unabated to the quarterback. Left end. Five yard penalty. First down. The penalty was on Javon Curse. I couldn't tell if Tom Brady. Oh, he did make a little sharp out. Maybe that was enough to get Tennessee to jump off sides. And it's a big first down for the New England Patriots. New England with one timeout remaining. <laughs> Brady pulls it down and now throws over the middle, and that's complete. Fall all across the 40 to the 42 yard line. 30 seconds to play. Brady doesn't want to use the last time out here, so he'll spike the ball and stop the clock with 23 seconds to play. It'll be a third and three. Pretty good job by Tom Brady saving that last time out. 23 seconds. Can they get one big play to get a chance to kick a field goal? Look where you think or we think Adam Vinatieri must get before he kicks. A long field goal. 48 yards his long for the season so far. This is a third and three. Quick drop, quick pass, and that's incomplete intended for Daniel Graham. You know, Greg, I talked about that offsides. It might have uh, taken away an opportunity for Tennessee to at least get down and try a long field goal. We didn't even talk about where the decision Jeff Fisher made. He putted. It did. It went to about the 18-yard line. He got the ball back in tr very good field position. They go down again to try to get some points, and they get the field goal blocked. So some missed opportunities in this first half for the Tennessee Titans. Tennessee Titans reached the red zone twice and came away empty without any points at all. Another short kick, and the catch by Derek Mason is made at the 34-yard line. So 13 seconds to play here in the first half. Well, if you're on offense and you're going against New England, you want to block number 54, Teddy Bruschi. Gets off the block that time, makes the tackle. Just watch how he diagnoses plays, takes on the blocker, gets off, makes the tackle, and he just has tremendous feel and where to go when he's watching the quarterback, gets involved in so many plays, very instinctive player and very talented. Well, Teddy Bruschi and the rest of the defense will watch Steve McNair take a knee here and wind the final 13 seconds off the clock. And the Titans will go to the locker room down by a touchdown. Tom Brady with a touchdown pass, a rushing touchdown from Antoine Smith, and the New England Patriots lead it by a score of 14 to 7. We go down to Arm. Jeff, given the couple of big miss opportunities for points here in the first half. Yeah, we did, but we're moving the football. You know, we got down here, we're moving the football. We just got to keep doing what we're doing. You know, defense got to settle down. We're not getting him to third down, not get him off the field, but we're, we're okay. Think Please, so we're going to go warm up, come back out, and have a great second half. All right, Coach Greg. Armin, thank you. That is the end of our first half, and here's our score. The Patriots 14, the Trades numbers from the first half. Hendrick will kick it away. It is safe to say it has not warmed up. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know it's cold when your spotter's wearing gloves. <laughs> Mike's sticking a finger down there. Mike Luckett is hitting about four players. Hendrick to kick it away. Bethel Johnson, along with Kevin Falk, are deep for New England. 14 yard line it's Johnson going to try to break it to the outside and he is corralled at about the 20 yard line by Tony Beckham and let's go down Armin. Greg with the Patriots permission I was able to listen into their locker room very interesting offensive coordinator Charlie Weiss sounding very commanding said this drive right now is the most important drive of the season for the Patriots to turn a one score game into a two score game and Bill Belichick sounding very strong said 
The more this game goes down to the wire, the more Steve McNair is going to want to put it into his hands, and we cannot let him out of the pocket. And he said the other thing we got to watch for is that Mason guy. That means wide receiver, Derek Mason, Greg. Yeah, Charlie Weiss, the oh. terrific offensive mind of these New England Patriots, and has been mentioned as a possible head coaching candidate. Out to the 33 yard line or so is Antoine Smith as we look at the offensive leaders from the first half and Brady's numbers were 12 of 23 for 166 total. Antoine Smith rushed for 32 yards and a touchdown and the best receiver on the field was Bethel Johnson in a New England uniform with two catches for 55 yards and a score. You know 10 years ago 15 years ago you get conditions like this in the National Football League and both teams would just run the ball run the ball and wait for the other team to make the mistake. In this modern age, the skilled players are better. They demand more of them. They execute under tough conditions. Smith breaks around the left side across the 40 to the 43-yard line, and that'll be a New England first down. Brad Castle making the stop after a 10-yard pickup. Well, that's a good job by the offensive line by the New England Patriots. Damian Woody pulling around. Larry Sinners, the fullback, gets a very good block on Brad Castle, knocks him down. Antoine Smith gets extra yards after the block. Boy Larry Sinners known for his pass catching ability but comes in and gets a terrific block on that last run. Well Tom Brady told us that they were going to have to make Tennessee honor the run. They come out running it here and now a quick pitch to the outside to Deion Branch which the New England Patriots view is very much a run in itself. Well that's what it is. Uh, I think the New England Patriots are going to do a lot more quick throws get the football in Brady's hands three step drops and and those quick screens to the outside like you saw that time but as we saw last week the corners for the Tennessee Titans they had very good week tackling last week and they've tackled well so far in this game second and eight. Quick pitch to the side, and Antoine Smith hit almost immediately by Samari Roll. Well, it's a good thought, but it's not working that well. You look where Tom Brady has thrown the football, a lot of underneath throws, a couple down the field, got some big yards, but that time they had two running backs in the game, two tight ends, and one wide receiver. Tennessee brought in extra linebackers to thinking it's going to be a run. They split it out. Tennessee ready for it. No yards on the quick throw. Very good defensive scheme and reaction by the Titans defense. Third and seven. Given goes in motion. Brady steps up, throws, tipped, incomplete. Well, sometimes in this league, it's hard to go in notion. Is that what you said? Did you say he went in notion? Because you know I live for moments like this when you say something improper, but Tom Brady throws the football so hard that Kevin Falk cannot come up with the catch. Jeff Fisher cheering his defense on that, that may have been three or four icicles ago and I don't <laughs> recall. Ken Walter is not going to point to his punting numbers with pride in this game. That may be his best one all night but then it bounces back toward the Patriots and it'll be down at about the 30 yard line. McNair and company will go back to work as Brady and Weiss talk it over. Hey, Sunday begins with America's number one news magazine, 60 Minutes, followed by television's most watched new drama, Cold Case, and then Charlie Sheen and John Cryer host the People's Choice Awards. It's all here Sunday on CBS. I got a notion to watch that. <laughs> From the 30 yard line, McNair and the Tennessee offense. Eddie Jordan for a couple. A Teddy Bruschi on the tackle again. This guy, I, I, don't, I don't know what to say. He's not going to the Pro Bowl. He deserves it. He's absolutely one of the top two middle linebackers in the AFC this year, but he can just diagnose plays, preparation, when you prepare as hard as he does, when he sees an opportunity, he's able to take advantage of it. Teddy Bruschi, the leading tackler for the New England Patriots on the season. A couple of interceptions, return for a touchdown, second and nine. George, and finds running room off 
right tackle out close to the 40 yard line it'll be third and short I tell you what I have watched all night I'm waiting to see if anybody can make Eddie George fall straight down instead of always forward good blocking up front Benji Olsen 75 gets a tremendous block and somebody gets out on Teddy Bruschi that's Fred Miller just gets his hands on him enough to let Eddie George get up there and get close to a first down now the Patriot fans come to their feet third and very short yardage quarterback sneak well maybe not Ted Washington's in front of you penalty markers fly this Move play it. won't count and it'll be against the Titans boy sorry to interrupt you but Steve McNair went on too long of a count prior to the snap false start 69 offense five yard penalty still third down Zach so, Pillar and well, set of third and one is now a third and six yeah when you get in situations like that everybody knows what you got to do you've got to snap the football quickly so the offensive linemen don't do what they did and try to catch the defense before they can dig in. So now instead of a short pop for a first down, they need six yards, and McNair out of the shotgun spreads the field. On the blitz, he throws downfield, coming back, and he's got the ball. Catch is made by Tyrone Calico, the rookie out of Middle Tennessee State, and it's a first down. This is all Bill Belichick talked about. They worried about this. Steve McNair just throwing it down the field, and the big receivers for Tennessee, the blitz by the New England Patriots, they get in there, Rodney Harrison free, gets a hit on Steve McNair, but he knows what he has down the field. A big wide receiver, throw it up, Tyrone Poole cannot react before the receiver does. You get a big first down. 30-yard pickup, first down. George waits for his blocks. And inside the 30 to about the 28-yard line. Well, a couple things. That was, you said it right. He waited for his blocks. An experienced runner, he took it outside when I went, oh, he should have taken it inside and got two or three yards, but watch what he does. He gets out there. Aaron Kenny gets a good job. Zach Pillar around to the outside, gets out there and gets nine yards. Fifth play of this drive for Tennessee. McNair. Pulls it down. Now over the middle, and that's complete to Eddie George. Steve McNair told us that he had the best day of practice this week that he's had in three weeks. Yeah, he has, and you can see it when you watch him here tonight. He missed his first pass, but after that, he's been on target. He's gotten good protection. And, and what really impresses me the most, and Deion Sanders was talking about it at halftime, this receiving core is really well-rounded. They got speed, quickness. They got a couple guys with really good size. So they, it, it blends together and makes a terrific group. First down at the New England 25. Look at the frustration in Steve McNair with that flag. Delay, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. Well, that's why Steve McNair was frustrated, and it was close, but anytime there's a delay of game, it is the quarterback's fault. Call the play, do all that stuff, but you always have to keep an eye on the play clock. Mistakes beginning to pile up a little bit for Tennessee. Two false starts, three delay of game calls. Six penalties, all of them five-yarders, but you said it right, Greg. There's some big five-yard penalties in there. First and 15. Chris Brown shakes a tackle oh, and upended short of the 25 yard line by Rodney Harrison. Well, what do you say about Rodney Harrison? Chris Brown, fresh, hasn't run up the football a great amount this year. Little trip by Richard Seymour. Watch what Teddy Bruschi does. Benji Olsen on the block. Oh, man, no matter how quick you are, 
when 320 pounds hits you, you go down. On second and 11. McNair with time over the middle and locks in to Aaron Kinney, number 88. You said it right when he locked in, but such confidence in controlling the football. When a quarterback really has good control of the football, he takes what we perceive as chances and throwing it in tight situations. Steve McNair knew he could stick it right to the, to the belly of Aaron Kinney, and even though there's two defenders there, he got it in. You saw the turnaround in fortune as far as total yards go. Third and six. McNair throws and that's complete inside the 15 to the 11 is Justin McCarrens and it's a first down. Well that's just too tough. You got McCarrens against Roman Pfeiffer. That is a talented wide receiver and Steve McNair he knows all the way. I got a linebacker covering my wide receiver and Justin McCarrens look at it. Nice fake inside Roman Pfeiffer looks he stops breaks out wide open good throw. George and Kinney in the backfield from the 11 Eddie George to about the five Greg as you watch this game you watch this drive a lot of people around the country they haven't seen the Tennessee Titans a lot the best way to describe them is they're like their coach they're just tough the quarterback is tough and I'm saying it in respect because it's said too often about a lot of players. The running back is tough, so it just permeates through the – hell, the general manager, he's tough. So everybody, they got a, a way about them, and they come out and play no matter what the situations are. Just outside the six-yard line, second and five. We get another marker, and this is picked off, but this won't count. Teddy Bruschi made the interception, but we had a mo illegal motion, a false start that shut that play down. Prior to the snap, false start, 71, offense, five-yard penalty, main second down. You know, the official had a little trouble getting that flag out of his pocket. Well, it was a good penalty that time. I don't know if Steve McNair would have thrown that pass. I think he knew there was a false start. But it takes away Teddy Bruschi's interception. So it backs them up to about the 12-yard line now. It's second and 10. Looking on from behind McNair and Eddie George. George gets the handoff to about the 10 Mike Vrabel there to meet him you know that play Greg just illustrates what you said early in the game they're going to be patient just keep doing what we do trying to sneak a running play in there in an obvious passing situation and just don't get like you said don't get impatient don't throw it every single down where the blitzing and all the different looks by the Patriots might catch you off guard and create a turnover Four wide receivers now on third and ten. McNair throws, and that's complete. Inside the five, Derek Mason looking for the end zone. No touchdown signal as yet. It is now a touchdown. I never saw the signal. I'm looking down in the field. I thought maybe Derek Mason stepped out of bounds, but it's the blitz. Terrific pickup by the Tennessee Titans. Derek Mason absolutely goes over the pylon. It's a touchdown. There's the same move again. Fake inside. Asante Samuels cannot make the tackle. And he goes up and over Tyrone Poole. But you're right, Phil. I, I still haven't seen an upraised arm for a touchdown. That is about the fifth time they've thrown an exact same route to about four different receivers. Gary Anderson's extra point is up and through. And with 4-14 to play in the third quarter, the Tennessee Titans all even. We're tied at 14. 
couldn't see him through the sheet of ice. Really terrific game planning by the Tennessee Titans. Hendricks kick. From the 19 yard line, it's Patrick Pass. Pass coming this way. 30. 35. And knocked out of bounds at about the 37 yard line. 18 yard return. Steve McNair, touchdown pass, finds him back even with New England. You know, you can log on to SuperBowl.com and see what the experts have to say about Joe Gibbs' return to the NFL and get complete playoff coverage at SuperBowl.com or at Super Bowl on AOL. Brady and the Patriots. Brady pulls it down, throws this way, and throws it out of bounds. It'll be second and ten. Back to the touchdown. Yeah, let's go back and look at it. I've shown you this route a few times, and you want to know why it's working. The Patriots are faking a blitz. They back out, but when they... They think that the offense knows they're going to blitz. They're going to throw those quick look in passes. Well, they're faking the look in passes and then breaking back outside. And that's why they're open. And Jeff Fisher was right. He says, our game plan, we've got it nailed. It's looked really good the whole game so far. Well, Tennessee really taking care of the football, too. Straight ahead. Brady gives to, to David Gibbons. Out okay. to the 43-yard line. It'll be third and four. Greg, you're talking about taking care of the football. We were up here in the snowball game two years ago, and there were no turnovers. You got playoff teams. They both have a hardened group of veterans on each side. The quarterbacks execute game plans very well. They just know how to do it without making a lot of mistakes. Brady now looking at a third and four. And instead, it's a direct snap to number 33, Kevin Falk. Falk, first down yardage around the right side, across midfield into the 49 of the Tennessee Titans. Well, I tell you, just keep, keep giving them different looks, and that's what you do. When you can't overpower your opponent, if you can't outrun him, you've got to disguise and get him off balance to give your players a little bit of a chance to make it work. And Tom Brady, hey, when your career's over, Hollywood is not calling. <laughs> it is not calling, but pretty good fake by him. Have a little fun when you can. This is Antoine Smith to about the 46. And we are under three minutes to play here in the third quarter. Hey, big first down there by the Patriots. Keeps Get some, some momentum back on their side. Slow down Tennessee. Just change the game around. We talked about Jeff Fisher. We got to answer. Well, Bill Belichick's over there. Hey, guys, come on. Let's answer. Let's answer against the Tennessee Titans. Make them keep fighting from behind. Yeah, we get a timeout as uh, number 65, Damian Woody, is slow. Or we didn't get a timeout. We actually had a stoppage of the clock, and now we're setting the play clock again. Well, see, you were hoping it's a timeout so you could run back there and get in front of that heater again. <laughs> but I turned it off. Falcon centers now go out as wide receivers running formation they split the five wide receiver look quick pass out to the side and it gets almost nothing to Daniel Graham and there's a loose ball Tennessee says it has it and they do Daniel Graham with the catch, fumbled it. Carlos Hall came up with the football. What you do to short passes, the defense, when it's a short pass, everybody converts to the football. And when you get a lot of defensive players converging, somebody hits the ball, it comes loose. Recovery by the Tennessee Titans. It's Kate Bostworth, Dave's all new Monday here on CBS. From the Tennessee sideline, we're told Derek Mason suffered a bruised leg on that touchdown he scored. He will probably return to the lineup, but now Tyrone Calico has replaced him for the moment, the rookie wide receiver. McNair spreads the field. Quick pass. Oh, that's going to go nowhere. Frank Wycheck all the way back to the 37 yard line. And Frank Wycheck was going to throw a pass, but Willie McGinnis, an outside linebacker who can also play defensive end, 
diagnoses it real quick. It's a backward pass by Steve McNair. Willie McGinnis goes flying out there. Fred Miller had no chance to block him. Oh, he just saw it all the way. Good reaction, good athletic ability, and it really puts the Titans in a hole. Loss of 10 on the play. It's now second and 20. And they'll give it to Chris Brown trying the left side, and that doesn't get much. What a turn of events. You know, I always laugh because so many things one team tells us, the other team says the exact same thing to us and counters it. And Bill Belichick says, look, Jeff Fisher this, this, and that, and I know somewhere in the game he's going to take a chance to try to make something happen for his football team. There was a chance they were trying, and the Patriots were ready for it. Derek Mason is back on the field on third and 19. McNair throws and underthrows his receiver on the far side of the field. That's Mason. And that'll bring Craig Hendrick, the punter, on. What a series by the Patriots defense. If you want to be an outstanding team in the National Football League, if you want to have success in the playoffs, your defense is going to have to bail you out. And right there, that series, the New England Patriots defense came up big. Winner here tonight plays in the AFC Championship game next Sunday. We have a ways to go. Troy Brown is deep. Oh, nice kick by Hendrick. Beautiful. Brown going to let it bounce, and it's going to take a Titan roll to the five-yard line. Craig Hendrick, a 56-yard punt at just the right time as far as Titans fans are concerned. Playoff excitement continues tomorrow. Co-MVP Peyton Manning leads the Colts into Arrowhead for a showdown with Priest Holmes and the Chiefs. The action begins with Jim Dan Dion and Boomer on the NFL today. Marcus catches up with Chief Superback Priest Holmes. Bonnie Bernstein corrals the Colts' Peyton Manning and his talented receivers. Leslie has the story of the slow start and strong finish of Donald McNabb and the Eagle. That's tomorrow as you see Antoine Smith pulling his way across the 20 yard line to about the 22 or the 23 a 17 yard pickup and that is likely the final play of this third quarter. Antoine Smith limping off the field on the far side and appears to be in a little pain. He'll have some time to work on it. That's the end of our third quarter. There's our score. The Titans 14, the Patriots 14. Back to Gillette Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Along with Phil Sims and Armin Katayan, Greg Gumbel back at Gillette Stadium. Antoine Smith injuring his left ankle on this carry and limp to the sideline where he is trying to work it out and what a huge carry that was as far as field position goes. Oh man it was it was really important gets them out from their own goal line gets them out to a part of the field where they now can open up and call any play in their playbook. Line of scrimmage now the 22. Kevin Falk is in the backfield with Brady. This is Brown in motion. Brady throws this side overthrows incomplete it'll be second and ten. Boy well, Tennessee after that initial seri first series or two where they had trouble covering the New England wide receivers in certain situations have made tremendous adjustments and the biggest one is they're just sitting back more and they're watching the quarterback and when Tom Brady looks at a receiver they converge to him. the 27 yard line Keith Bullock coming up from behind to make the tackle yeah you know the New England not afraid to take a chance go with the four wide receiver look kind of a hurry up offense trying to change the tempo their offense is not clicking the way they want Tennessee's kind of got their number so if you don't like the way it's going change it I'm relax 
Now on third and four, quick pass to the outside, and that is complete and out of bounds, and enough it appears for a first down. Let's see where the ball is spotted. David Givens with the catch. It is enough to move the chains. Right in front of Andre Dyson, and he kind of clapped his hands like, dang, thought maybe I could get there and get it, but Tom Brady has a sneaky strong arm, and he is a terrific, terrific short ball thrower to the sidelines. So now the Patriots moving out to their own 33. And once again, Brady from the shotgun with time throws it way beyond everybody on the far side of the field, Deion Branch. <laughs> Come on, yeah, I hope it's, well, what's it say, Greg? It's really cold. I don't think it's that cold. I'm afraid to read it. But really, it's been not, it's, it's not, not bad. I know it's cold, but the wind is not near what they thought it was going to be so it's made it good for the fans and it's it's really made it good for the football players. Hey I want to tip our hat to our crew out here in these elements and doing their usual terrific job. They have our respect and admiration. Second and ten. Brady throw it far side complete and hit right away by Samari Roll as David Givens. You know, the New England Patriots throw so many passes to the outside, just like the one we saw to David Givens. I just, it was, as we were talking over the last few days, I said, one of these corners has got to take a chance and know they're going to try this and get up there and make a break and try to intercept it. That time, Samari Roll was close. Another big third down play. Crossing over the middle, Deion Branch has the first down at the 45-yard line. Tom Brady hanging in there. What they hope to do is what's going on. Change the tempo of the game. Another short throw over the middle. Very accurate. Tough catch. Phil, you mentioned the Snow Bowl earlier. We were here for that against the Raiders. You remember things weren't happening very well for, for New England offensively. They came out in the second half and threw the ball all over the field despite the conditions. This running play by Kevin Falk takes it up near midfield. And that's this is a little different, Greg, than sometimes when New England does try to hurry up. They go five wide receivers. Of course, when you do that, you know you have to throw it because Tom Brady is no running threat. But this game, they're making Tennessee think. They're keeping a back in the backfield so it could be run or pass. On second and five, Brady drifting this way. And is going to run it across midfield, out of bounds at the 45-yard line, and enough for a first down. Well, we talk about Tom Brady. He's no threat to run, and he comes up with another big run and gets a first down. It was a screen pass to the middle. Watch Kevin Falk. Robert Smith sees it, knocks him down. Tom Brady has nothing. He knows it. So he runs for the first down. Tom Brady, the non-runner, has rushed twice for first downs tonight. And, you know, he, he looks terrific doing it. <laughs> but, you know, we laugh, but how big have both of his runs? The first one led to a touchdown. That was a big run for a first down. He pump fakes and now throws and overthrows a wide-open Deion Branch. And we have a Titan down in midfield at about the 35 yard line. That's Ryan Long, the rookie out of Washington State and Tennessee's fourth round draft pick. Well, we'll take a timeout as they look at Ryan Long, 11.52 to play in the fourth. Ryan Long in some obvious pain, but was able to walk off the field under his own power, and that's a good sign. Second and 10, New England at the Titans, 45. Remember where this drive started from. Started at their own five-yard line. Brady calling signal. Fakes the quick pass and gives it up the middle to Kevin Falk, and Falk to about the 40. You know, still going with the hurry up offense as you watch the New England Patriots. 
Tom Brady looking to the sideline, trying to get the play from Charlie Weiss and relay it to the players. And one of the reasons why they continue to do this, so the Tennessee Titans won't substitute players. Keep the same 11 guys on the field. This is a third and five. Brady pulls it down, is going to take off and run, and slides down at the 39-yard line, and that will be short of a first down. Albert Hainsworth, the big defensive tackle in his second season. Well, I'll tell you one thing. When you talk about the Tennessee Titans, they are very good on the defensive line. Albert Hainsworth, like you said, second year, he's big and extremely athletic. Fourth and four, and Ken Walter. In to kick Derek Mason is deep for Tennessee. End over end. They're going to let it bounce, and it takes a Tennessee bounce from about the five to about the eight. All in all, the Patriots will take it. 10 28 to play. Fourth quarter. We'll be back. 8 7 Central on CBS. McNair from his own seven yard line. Eddie George and George continues on his feet Jeff Fisher was talking about what would be important from Eddie George would be the violent yards and that's the yards after contact yeah that's a good description of it violent yards Mike Vrabel so strong on the outside stops it from being a long game but this for the New England defense this could be the football game Stop them on three and out, and you give the football back to your offense almost in scoring, a scoring range before they even run a play. George again. To about the 12 or 13 yard line. And boy, you, you said it right, Greg. It's violent yards. It's tough. Ted Washington, 92, in the middle of your screen, just holds his guy up, gets off the block of Justin Hardwig, and gets around the legs of Eddie George. 6'5", 375 pounds, and still able to move around like that. Chris Brown into the backfield, third and five. And he's going to give it to Brown. And Brown, across the 15, and out to about the 18 yard line and appears to be enough for a first down. Chris Brown, the first down maker. Oh, it doesn't rhyme. I was trying to make a little rhythm there, you know, but it didn't work. Robert Frost is rolling <laughs> in his grave. <laughs> but what a, what three calls by Mike Heimerdinger and this Tennessee offense to execute it and get a very big first down. And we need to reset the play clock here. That's what Bill Carollo points out. But two tough runs by Eddie George, and then the draw play to Chris Brown, and he is just strong enough to get one extra yard to get the first down. George and Holcomb in the backfield. New England crowd making some noise as we come up on eight minutes to play. George gets the call. And makes the 20-yard line and no more. Now they're showing that patience, Greg, that you talked about, that you said, Jeff Fisher, that's what they want to do. And it, it takes a lot of courage, I think. When you're backed up like that, it's third down. You know you need a first down in the worst way, but you stick with the game plan. You know that draw play is something you think will work, and you run it, and it works for you. And your convictions, they come true. Armin Katayan told us earlier, Eddie George playing with that left shoulder in a harness. Dislocated a week ago. McNair stepping up and falls. Back at the 17 yard line, Willie McGinnis gets credit for the stop, a loss of three, and it'll be third and 11. Yeah, there is nobody open down the field. Steve McNair securing the football. Willie McGinnis is he in pass coverage. Nice job of getting around Fred Miller. And Steve McNair just trips over his own guy. 
But Willie McGinnis hustling gets the sack. Titans with wide receivers all over the place and this play clock winding down. McNair is going to have to use a timeout. Titans use their first timeout here in the second half to stop the clock with 6.53 to play in the fourth. We'll be back. The D is backwards, but we get the idea. Third and 11. And a big moment in this ball game. McNair still with the ball, throws, incomplete, intended for Calico. Steve McNair on the play action fake in the New England Patriots had a corner blitz on, and he goes right into it, and it doesn't give him time. Tyrone Poole coming on the blitz, sees Steve McNair, he doesn't have time to wait for the receiver down the field. Throws before he's ready, and it's off target. Craig Hendricks' last punt was good for 56 yards. Let's see what he gets off here. Troy Brown at midfield. Inside the 40, great field position for the New England offense. A 32-yard punt, a 10-yard return. And Tom Brady will start from inside the Tennessee 40-yard line. 6.40 to play. Fourth quarter. Tie game. The NFL on CBN. Well, while we have a moment, the uh, executive producer of CBS Sports, Tony Petiti, lost his dad, John, earlier this week, passed away. And all of us here at CBS Sports extend our sincere best wishes to Tony and his family and we want him to know that uh, we are thinking of them at this time. 6.40 to play. Antoine Smith is back on the field for New England and he gets the handoff and he finds a little running room to the 35 yard line. First well, time all night a team starts in their opponents half of the field. Well, Greg, all night we've been talking about the Tennessee Titans having patience. I thought for sure New England would come out and run a play action pass and try to get it deep down the field and maybe get some quick points, but nope. They're going to continue to do what they're doing. Play the percentages, fake pass, run it up in there and get five yards. There you see, as Kevin Falk comes onto the field and Falk gets the handoff. Cut down at the 33. Bullock and Sermon with the tackle. You know, of course, this is hard to do, too, for New England to keep running the football. Watch Keith Bullock, number 53. You're only going against the best run defense in the National Football League. And Keith Bullock from the backside sees the play, very athletic, gets around blockers and makes tackles. Back in October, the victory by New England over Tennessee began the 12-game winning streak for the Patriots. They're trying to make it 13 straight. Third and three, Brady to throw. Throwing down the sideline, it's incomplete. Larry centers out of the backfield, covered by Bullock. And we are looking at a 51-yard field goal from here should Belichick decide to go that route. I think this is an interesting decision. What do you do? Do you go for it on fourth down or do you punt it? It looks like he's going to go for it. There are a lot of different scenarios here. Could they try to fake them, draw them off sides? Probably not with Tom Brady in the shotgun. There's all kinds of confusion on the Tennessee defense. If you're confused, call a timeout. It looks like they finally got lined up. Fourth and three. Brady looks to this side, throws, has his man. Complete inside the 30-yard line. Troy Brown, first down. Well, when we talked to Troy Brown on Thursday, he came back from injury, and he says, I've come back, and what I do is I take pressure 
off the other receivers on third down. On third down in tough situations, Tom Brady is going to try to find Troy Brown one-on-one -on -one in the slot. Just breaks out real quick. He's against Lance Schulters. Again, that's tough for a safety. This is Kevin Falk, and Falk to about the 28 or the 27-yard line. Falk continues to move as we come up on 445 to play. Oh, that was some big first down. Now you're the Patriots. You control the clock, the situations. You can force it in, or do you just try to get another first down to get in position for a field goal? Adam Vinatieri trying to stay loose. Second and eight. And we got a timeout. Titans confused again. The Titans use their second timeout here in the second half. 421 to play, fourth quarter. Adam Vinatieri trying to stay loose, trying to stay warm, much like the rest of us. Look at that, 14 and 19 on game, winning, or tying field goals. That's pretty good, because I'm sure a lot of those field goals have been of the long kind. It'd be about a 45-yard field goal attempt from here. Brady to throw. Gets time over the middle, little behind his intended receiver, Graham. That's a perfect throw by Tom Brady. Daniel Graham is running across the field, and Tom Brady, on purpose, throws it to his back shoulder because if he leads him, Lance Schulters is going to cut in front and go for the interception. So the quarterback had a good view. He saw what was going to happen, tried to pull the tight end up, but Daniel Graham not quite able to do it. Brady's numbers on third down. This is third and eight. Big third down. Down the middle, wide open, and a diving catch, and he dropped the ball. Daniel Graham made the dive, looked like he had it, and dropped it. And the only reason this ball is incomplete, Tom Brady is under pressure. Look at him. Kevin Carter beat his blocker, gets inside, and Daniel Graham not able to come up with the catch. Comes down the field. It's a zone defense. Nobody covering him. He's in the open spot. Tom Brady tries to hit him. Tough catch for Daniel Graham. Vinatieri from 46 yards out. This is for the New England lead on its way. And good. He curled it just inside the left upright and just over the crossbar. Greg, you said it right. This is about as far as it could go. It looked like he got a little bit of the turf. The ball never really got up in the air. Just goes inside and really only makes it by a couple yards in length. And he knows it's close. Look at the body language. I think Adam knew it was good before anyone else did. Well, the kicker always knows. Four oh six on the clock. Now, perhaps the most important aspect of this game right now is not that Tennessee gets the football back, but they only have one timeout remaining. Well, one timeout, plenty of time. Kevin Carter almost saved the moment for the Tennessee Titans by pressuring Tom Brady, but Adam Vinatieri comes through with the big kick. That's Justin McCarron standing inside his own five-yard line. Vinatieri, of course, the hero of Super Bowl 36. I don't know if you and I have ever seen him miss a big kick. This is McCarron from the nine. Wrestled down before he gets to the 25 yard line. Boy, you talk about big kicks from Adam Vinatieri in the postseason. Go back to the AFC Divisional Playoff in 01 against Oakland. 
45 yard field goal ties the game at 13. And then in overtime from 23 yards out, he gave the Patriots a 16 13 win. And we were talking about Super Bowl 36 against St. Louis. The 48 yarder as time ran out to give the Patriots a 20 to 17 win and the championship. And just moments ago, Vinatieri from 46 yards away. Ooh. That looks closer every time we see it. Well, we keep showing different angles. He'll miss it here in a minute. McNair from the shotgun at his own 24. All kinds of time. Throws it out here. And that's complete. And across the 30 to the 34 is Justin McCarron's. Boy, what does that say about Tennessee's offensive line? They are tremendous pass blockers. Obvious passing situation. Steve McNair must have held the football for seven to eight seconds at least. Finally, somebody gets open. Line of scrimmage is the 35. It's a first down. You see the game winning drives in Steve McNair's football history. Well, he had one last week against the Baltimore Ravens. Stepping up, looking downfield and throws. Oh, what a catch! And that is ruled a completion at the 47 yard line. Drew Bennett in a crowd. Well, we got to see this on replay for a couple reasons. One, the catch is phenomenal. The football gets away from Steve McNair. I don't know why he threw it. Drew Bennett, one foot down, oh. gets the other foot down the player. Terrific play by Drew Bennett. And it looks like. Let's see. We're going to get a challenge from Bill Belichick. So Bill Carollo. New England is challenged in the ruling on the field that it was a reception. We'll review the play. Bill Carollo will move to the hooded monitor and check it out as we take one more look at it. McNair throwing. Count the New England defenders. Two of them with another in the vicinity. And Drew Bennett, and I'm sure one of the questions is going to be whether or not he had possession as he fell out of bounds. Can't tell from that angle if he did get his foot down from behind. This is going to be a better shot. Boy, whether it's whether it's ruled a catch or not, what a phenomenal effort by Drew Bennett. Could you tell, Greg, from no. that shot? I couldn't tell either. So as coaches look on, Bill Carollo goes to the monitor. Let's take another look. McNair just throws it. And there is the grab. And it, you know, Greg, it looks, it, you have to think maybe it hit the ground. We're going to have to see it. Watch the grass. The left foot. He has to get both feet down. Hit the defender. That's no good. That would be out of bounds. You know, two. Let's watch Drew Bennett. You know, there's so many things you get replays like this. See if he continues to have the football in his grasp. Does he control it? He's got it. It's moving a little, but he still is in control. Question is, does he have control? when it counts with his feet are coming down. Yes, it looked to me he's got control. The football can move. People think it cannot move around. It can. As long as he's in control, it looks like he is. And I thought if he has control, I thought his feet were down. Well, I tell you what, that was some terrific here, but let's look at it from behind. This is the best view, I think. Yes, that was a good shot. You could see his toe just touched the ground. I thought it looked like he was inbounds. Here we go. 
After reviewing the play, it's been determined the receiver possessed the ball and had both feet inbounds. The play stands is called a completion. New England is charged with the first timeout. Phil, have you noticed we get these kinds of things when we visit Foxborough in yeah. January? <laughs> well, you know what? That was a, the last shot that we saw from the truck. That was the best shot of all. You could finally really determine that Drew Bennett did get that other foot down. The toe just hit inside. New England is charged with a timeout. They're down to two. And again, Greg, the football can move when a receiver is catching it as long as he has control. McNair from the shotgun steps up again on the run midfield 45 bulls his way close to the 40 yard line and a first down. Oh man Steve McNair you must go low when you see him running like that. He is so big and so strong but now New England anxious to get to the passer and when you get too anxious what do you do you get out of your rush lanes you allow the quarterback to step forward. If you make Steve McNair go side to side, he can't outrun you. But when he steps forward, that's when he can really be a factor. Two thirty two to play. McNair over the middle. This is Mason to the thirty three. Gary Anderson remember hit a 46 yard field goal to beat Baltimore and McNair is limping. Well that could be I, I don't know what he probably got it on the run. He will limp off to the side as the two minute warning approaches. Two minutes to play in Foxborough. A trip to the AFC title game on the line. It's a three point game. Two minutes to play here in Foxborough. Gary Anderson, a season long 46 yards. It's where the ball would have to be for him to attempt another. And that 46 yarder was last week against the Baltimore Ravens. Now I think if it's over 40 yards, you'll see Craig Hentrick kick it. Because going this direction, it is it is into the win even though it's not strong it's about a five to seven yard win I think for kickers limp or no limp McNair back on the field throws this side and nobody there and McNair still limping and there is a penalty marker this could be intentional grounding Well, here's Bill Carollo. It is intentional grounding. Not a Titan in the area. Intentional grounding, number nine, offense, 10 yard penalty. That penalty also includes a loss of down. Third down. Steve McNair is in the pocket. He's inside the tackle box. And look when you look to the outside, nobody close. To the football no receiver within 20 yards so that's an easy call for Bill Corolla. The line of scrimmage. Look at McNair's numbers. All right, we don't have a football down yet. Now we're trying to get Trying to figure out exactly where the line of scrimmage is. The confusion caused, I'm sure, by the cold weather. Well, I think the Patriots thought they got cheated in the yards, but they didn't. It was a 10-yard, a 10-yard penalty. Bobby Hamilton wants noise from the fans. He's line getting of, it. Line of scrimmage is the 43. It's a third and 13. Here they come. Quick pass. Penalty marker down. To the 32 or 31 yard line is Drew Bennett. And it's going to be a hold on Tennessee.
Tennessee had the perfect play on, but because of the blitz. Holding 75 offense. Take down at the line of scrimmage. 10 yard penalty. Replay third down. Right guard Benji Olsen. Benji Olsen watching. He sees the blitz. Oh boy. I don't know. I could not see the takedown. Watch the right guard. Well, he does grab him and pulls him down. Tough call, though, in that situation. Third and 23. Here they come again. McNair throws this side. It is caught by Bennett, and he is out of bounds at about the 42-yard line. That is about 11 or 12 yards short of a first down. Well, what a throw by Steve McNair under pressure. Another sideline catch by a tall, talented receiver. Drew Bennett, good job of catching it. Good job of getting his feet down. Fourth and 12. And the Tennessee Titans season on the line right here. Jeff Fisher wants that that third and final timeout right now. Good call. Rethink it. Get ready in case they give you an all out blitz. Have a play that allows you to give the quarterback a chance against the blitz. And if they don't have a play that can get down the field to pick up the first down. All out blitz is what we've seen from the New England Patriots the last five or six consecutive plays. Is there any reason to stop doing that now. Yeah, to be a little afraid of Steve McNair moving and throwing the football down the field. Well, remember what Rodney Harrison told us. He said he's a very smart quarterback. He throws the ball down the field, and he doesn't care if his guy is covered. He just throws it up. <laughs> well, that's he, he trusts his wide receivers. And well, we are under the two-minute warning, and we're told now that that last catch by Drew Bennett is being reviewed by the officials upstairs. Well, this timeout could could end up hurting the Tennessee Titans. I thought it was close if Drew Bennett got his feet down. Let's watch it. He makes the catch. Did he catch the football? Did he have the catch? This is left foot. Down, down. It's good. Wow. Boy, good. Good, good shot, I think, of showing that Drew Bennett had control of the football and got both feet down. That Drew Bennett has some future as a sideline dancer, doesn't he? <laughs> well, Drew Bennett was at one time a quarterback at UCLA. I remember Greg years ago, we went down there in preseason, and they're telling me about him going, yeah, he's gonna, we're going to make him a wide receiver. And I'm just thinking, ah, it won't work. You know, just that's too tough of a transition. I think he played one year at wide receiver at UCLA. Did pretty good and has really kind of been a project, but he has come through for the Tennessee Titans. I think both these teams have performed remarkably well under the circumstances. You were telling me in that frigid game at Soldier Field in Chicago, when the Giants played the Chicago Bears, you thought you were going to go out there and take on Mother Nature, weren't you? Oh, yeah, I ran out there, no sleeves on, no gloves. And about five minutes later, I ran as fast as I ever have in my whole life to run in and get more clothes on and get some gloves to keep warm. Here's Bill Carollo who has made his decision. After reviewing the play, the receiver possessed and caught the ball with both feet inbounds. The play stands as a catch. Fourth down. Well, this has been an interesting drive with a couple of reviews and a couple of penalties. And we still come to fourth and 12. Hey, Greg, when you talk about an all-out blitz, what that means is if there are six offensive players who can block defensive players, then the Patriots send one more than you have. The Titans, 13-4 and four on the season. Does it come to a close here tonight? McNair needs the 30-yard line for a first down. Here they come. Harrison, he throws it up. Bennett coming back for it, had it, and dropped it. Drew Bennett had a legitimate.
legitimate shot at catching this pass under a lot of duress from defenders couldn't come down with it. I think what first off the blitz by the Patriots they get Rodney Harrison free to the quarterback. Drew Bennett probably thought they were going to be there quicker than they were. He tried to snatch it out of the air and it just goes off his hands and good hustle by Asante Samuel to not allow Drew Bennett to get a second chance to catch the football. Amazing isn't it the miraculous catches Drew Bennett has come up with tonight and that one bounced off two hands and fell incomplete. What a job by Steve McNair just Greg you said it before it he just heaved it up gave his player a chance Drew Bennett saw it before the defender did stopped, came back had the chance to make the catch but didn't do it. You know what an opening day to this divisional playoff round the double overtime game in St. Louis these two teams within three points under two minutes to play and there are still two more games to be played tomorrow. Well, I tell you one thing you got to say right away the visiting team in both of the games today have been tremendous Carolina winning Tennessee coming here and playing so well for a team that's rested and it's at 14 and 2 during the season. Antoine Smith stacked up right across the 40 yard line and now Tennessee will call its third and final timeout last chance that the Titans have to stop the clock tomorrow here on CBS it'll be Indianapolis against hey. the Kansas City Chiefs Peyton Manning what an outstanding performance against the Denver Broncos last week against the Chiefs and Priest Holmes everyone expects this game to be something of a track meet well it could be high scoring it looks like they're going to get pretty good weather too look Peyton. at these two guys they're both had tremendous seasons throwing the football when I think of this game I think can the Indianapolis Colts get the emotional uh, feeling going they had last week and Greg probably not because the Kansas City Chiefs didn't beat them up two weeks ago like the Denver Broncos had done to them but and we know those Kansas City Chiefs however bad they may look on the road they are terrific in Arrowhead Stadium offense and defense for the Kansas City Chiefs is better at home of course like you said than it is on the road the other game on tap tomorrow the Green Bay Packers the Philadelphia Eagles and you know one other thing about that Kansas City Chiefs game everything that the Indianapolis Colts fans did to that's a great shot of Steve McNair and Drew Bennett they did to the Denver Broncos Peyton Manning is going to experience all that noise himself tomorrow in Kansas City and Brady finally takes a knee well you know they shouldn't be upset the New England Patriots shouldn't be Tom Brady stood behind there this game is not over he's trying to buy some extra time Meanwhile, the clock continues to move a minute 15. You know, if you're going to take a knee, you got to protect yourself, too. But, you know, these teams, the thing that they most respect about each other is that they're both physically and mentally tough football teams. Well, it was a lot of fun to watch. Rodney Harrison for so many years a San Diego Charger so excited about the prospects of this New England Patriots team and about being a member Brady will take the snap Titans cannot stop the clock and again some hard feelings and look at Jeff Fisher pointing to the clock Well, it's been a frustrating night for Jeff Fisher and the Tennessee Titans. But when all is said and done, they're going to come out on the short end of this divisional playoff game. Well, there's a difference in the clocks, Craig, for about uh, three seconds. So New England can let it run down, take a delay a game, and then try to run three seconds off the clock. That's exactly what they'll do. A little delay of game here. And three seconds remain on the game clock. 
Well, I definitely would not punt the football. Bill Belichick is not going to punt the football. Do you take your quarterback, take the snap, run backwards, fall down? Three seconds, I think you can handle it. You certainly don't want to turn the ball over at this end of the field. Or do you, you take it and do you hand it to a running back and to have him stand up and let everybody hit him and by the time he hits the ground the three seconds of course should be over sure you New York Giants are good at handing the ball off to a running back late in the game <laughs> that's right 1978 Richard Seymour the newly engaged Richard Seymour was you talking to him he